Hi, I'm Dr. Darina Rode. I have a PhD in physiology and a special interest in immunology. I also have a hypersensitivity to poison oak oil. And you can see here, I'm pretty inflamed right now from exposure two days ago to some poison oak plants that I was pulling out of my garden. When I first came to California 30 years ago, I was initially exposed to poison oak. I ran through it and probably got oils covered in all my clothes and didn't really respect the fact that I was going to react so strongly. So I actually went in the house, took a hot shower, which actually gets the stuff more into the skin, opens the pores, and lets that oil come in first. It's better to clear it off with soap and, and water, cold water to begin with, and then use some hot water after that. Anyway, I totally flared up. My eyes were were swollen shut, my whole face was swollen, and that began a 30-year sensitivity to poison oak. Now poison oak is a type 4 hypersensitivity, which means it's an unusual reaction in the body to actually not the poison oak oil, but the poison oak oil actually combines with a protein in the body, and that is what the immune system reacts to. It doesn't recognize that itself and says, whoa, there's something weird in here, we got to get rid of this. And it's mediated by cytotoxic T cells. Now most allergies are actually mediated by antibodies. So your typical pollen allergies, hay fever, the allergies to cats and dogs and animals, all of those things, dust mites, are all mediated by antibodies. In contrast, type 4 hypersensitivity is a cytotoxic T cell reaction. And those T cells, once they get activated, they actually go in and start killing the different cells that have that oil on it. So it's completely a dysfunctional reaction. There's nothing actually dangerous about the oil. It's just the body doesn't recognize it as self and thinks it's a foreign invader. Now, some of the information I got when I was younger was actually misinformation about how it works. Because really what happens once you've got a sensitivity is that the T cells not only remember that there's this dangerous foreign invader coming, they remember where that foreign invader came to begin with. So whenever I get exposed to poison oak, I actually break out on the areas of my initial exposure. Now two days ago, I was in the garden pulling out poison oak. I was very careful because I know I've got this hypersensitivity. And I probably had a little bit of poison oak touch me right about there. You can see I've got a little bump there. But I have the places that have been exposed in the past are my forearms. So even though there's probably no exposure this time to poison oak, my forearms became red and bump, bumpy. And then later, my whole face, neck, and eyes also began to swell up. Again, no exposure to my face. And that's because the cytotoxic T cells have memory. And when they become activated by a new exposure, in a location that might not be the same site as the old exposure, they still go to the same place where they had the exposure before and they do crap, basically. So that's one of the things that I had talked to doctors about many years ago and had them tell me, no, that's not possible. And then I talked to other PhDs in my PhD program and they said, yeah, that's how it works. They are memory cells. They're going to go back to the original locations. And I don't get the classic pustules and oozing kind of thing because it's not quite the same kind of reaction because there's really nothing there, but there's cytokines that are released which cause inflammation. And so I get a lot of inflammation. And as you can see, my one pustule this time is just in one location right there. So what do I do when I get poison oak? I've got a lot of experience with it and I actually do believe, I mean, science tells us that once you're sensitized to something, that's, that's it. And I believe all change is possible. So I'm actually working on creating the change that would allow me not to be sensitive anymore. You know, I've got T cells and I talk to them, right? Anyway, obviously I'm not completely clear. My eyes are still open. I think I'm over the worst of it. Typically type four hypersensitivities, the reaction starts 24 to 48 hours later as the T cells wake up at, from the exposure. In my case, they usually start within a couple hours. This time it actually took a full 24 hours before I actually started to see any kind of swelling on my body. So it was much more delayed than I'm used to. And I, I did some of the things that I do to help prevent my poison oak from progressing. One of them is I take a homeopathic poison oak remedy. I don't know, 
you know, homeopathic remedies are energetic medicine. There's actually nothing physically in the remedy besides the sugar tablet. But for some reason, they are the only thing that's helped me reduce the swelling. And I've gone into the doctor and gotten cortisone pills or shots or whatever it was, and that stuff didn't help. In fact, the most help I've gotten from the medical system was the first time, and they gave me sleeping pills, which was a big relief because I couldn't stand how it was feeling. So I use those, those remedies homeopathic remedies and I make sure I take them on a, a mouth that hasn't been eating or drinking for 15 minutes before and after. I avoid coffee and I avoid peppermints because peppermints can neutralize homeopathic memories, re remedies and I've seen that in myself where it'll stop working if I take a mint or something. So I avoid those kind of things or toothpaste that's mint based. The other thing I do is hey, if cortisone is one of the things they give to reduce the swelling, then I want to use something that's herbal, that's also an anti-inflammatory. And so I do strong licorice tea. Licorice has been shown to mim mimic the effects of cortisone and potentiate cortisone in the body. So basically, I want that anti-inflammatory effect. I want to cool down my immune system because obviously it's gone crazy when I hit a little bit of poison oak. So I do licorice tea really strong. The other things is we've got an inflammatory condition, right? So anything that's going to be anti-inflammatory is going to be valuable. And anything that's going to cause inflammation is not going to be useful. So I look for things like high levels of vitamin C. In fact, I took about 10,000 units yesterday, another 10,000 units today. So I'm doing a lot of vitamin C just to kind of get, just to kind of alleviate some of the inflammation and support my body in not becoming so inflamed. Now the number one trick I have for the itching that happens is actually hydrotherapy. Now hydrotherapy is a fancy way of basically saying I immerse my hand in hot water. You know, I'll run it under, the, the open the spigot, turn on the hot water all the way till it's almost scalding and I'll put my arm in it and it'll initially like, oh, it'll get worse. That itching will just totally, almost orgasmically peak, and then it'll subside. And it's kind of weird how it works. It's kind of like a counter irritant. You make it worse first, and then it gets relieved. And then I can take it out. I run cold water over it, because I don't want to leave that hot inflamedness. I'll run cold water over that, and the itching is relieved. If I start itching again, I'll do the same thing. And today I've been doing my face and I've been doing my arms. And they're really, you can see a lot of redness, but they don't have that painful, crusty, over-inflamed feeling that they usually have. It's always good to kind of understand what is actually going on so you can do something. So you've got a hypersensitivity, which means your immune system is overreacting. There's probably ways to somehow talk your immune system out of reacting to poison oak altogether. I haven't figured that out yet. But in the meantime, you can take some homeopathic poison oak, which actually reduces that reaction. Or you can use anti-inflammatories or things that are going to suppress your immune system to bring down that inflammation acutely. I hope that information was useful to you. If you liked it, please subscribe to my channel. That'll encourage me to create more. Thanks. Bye.